Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day seven of the August League Go Daily Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's prom. Palindrome Petitioning 2. So, how's everyone doing? Hope you, uh, this August month has been treating you well. We're a week in. Congratulate yourself about like a quarter of the way through. So, let's, uh, let's keep the streak going, shall we? I uh, give an S. Given a string S, petition S such that every substring of petition is a palindrome. Return the minimum cuts needed for a palindrome petition of S. Okay. Oof. So yeah, so I usually solve these live, so if... Um, yeah, so if it's a little bit too slow for you, skip forward, watch on 2x, whatever speed you need. Uh, maybe 1.25x, I don't know, whatever you need. Um, okay. Hmm. So the reduction about this problem is going to be that it is it is uh, the shortest path be, be, um, it's the shortest path problem from the beginning to the end and if you know hmm, but the tricky thing is that there can be a lot of these quote unquote edges um, so for example if everything's the same then you like if it's all A's then you can definitely just go for all of them but but yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Because there are just a, a, a lot of different techniques of doing it. Um, you can also do it with dynamic programming again, but kind of like a shortest path by looking each node one at a time. But you might have many edges, and in that case, I guess in that case, it's actually only n squared, and n is only two thousand, so maybe that's okay. Hmm. Um, and then the, the other thing then maybe that you have to figure out all the palindromes and and I guess you can also do that from n square right so maybe everything is just n square I don't know if that's going to be fast enough um, given that 2000 square in Python is a little bit slow but if needs be I could use another language can I do better than that I, I don't know I think I don't I mean other than having like shortcuts with heuristics um, I think in the, I think that you can construct an a graph of maybe n square. Hmm. Maybe you could shortcut that. I don't know. Maybe you could do greedy. Not sure. Hmm. Can you do greedy? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think you could do greedy in a good way because this is. Um, without looking at all the edges once. Um, and there are potentially n square edges. So I think that's why, um, yeah. So we can start by building out the edges uh, by, you know, so what I know that I already used uh, graph terms. So what do I mean, right? Let me pull up uh, a drawing thing. Hang on. Uh, to, to kind of what I, talk about what I mean. I think I don't, I sometimes skip over this a little bit too quickly. Um, but, but yeah, but basically, for example, you have a word, that's, I don't know, um, hmm. let's just say AAB, something like that, right? Okay, and then it crashes for some reason. Uh, let me try again. Sorry, friends. Hmm. All right, let's just write it out then, draw it out. Uh, let's say you have, you know, A, A, uh, B, A, C, A, or something like that, right? Just any word. Um, and then, the, the, so what I'm saying by shortest path is that we're trying to go from the beginning to the end in the shortest number of partition. And each partition, um, and each partition you can think about as one cost in the thing. Um, so you may have something like this, for example, uh, where, the, where there exists an edge, like this edge exists, if and only if, the word is a palindrome, right? Uh, the sub word. So that's basically the idea. And you can construct all this in n squared time. And then you can just do the dynamic programming in n squared time as well. Um, I, I don't, not gonna lie, I'm not super confident that this is fast enough. But we can, you know, it's a good starting point. And I think, to be honest, if I was using like Java or something like that, I would actually be super confident. But I am using Python today. So. We'll see if uh, delete code, you know, thing 
uh, is fast enough. The reason I say that is because for one test case, 4 million is going to be fast enough because I have low constants, but it depends on the number of test cases because Python is a little bit slow on need code and they use something called the sum of execution time, meaning they take your total time of all the edge cases to see if it's time limited instead of per test case, which is why um, there's a lot of uncertainty because I don't know how many test cases there are. Anyway, all right, let's, let's start by constructing the edges. Um, okay, so now let's start by... Uh, okay, how do we want to think about this? So let's just say we have edges, we have uh, default list, and here, uh, default take of a list. Um, here, uh, I think we kind of did it out a little bit. Uh, on a drawing, but but you know, let's say that we have a word like this. Our indexes means that this is a zero, this is a one. So we're actually using the spaces between the the string as as our nodes, um, or the the empty spaces between the characters as our nodes. So sometimes I get questions about like, how do you know if you use plus one or minus one or whatever for your indexing? Well. In this case, as long as you kind of draw a clear picture, you should be able to reason that out. Whether, like for example, in the last one, then it should be, um, it should be n, then right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so that, that's that's an as an example. Um, and yeah, okay. So then now let let's do the odd uh, length palindromes first. So yeah, so now ooh, do, 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 n is equal to length of s, and then and we start by for index. Uh, yeah, let's just do start in range of n. So this is the starting index, and then we have for offset in range of n, something like that, but not really um, because we'll early terminate. So so here in the odd length. We basically is trying to say, let's say we have a string of, uh, let, let's take this one again, say, so I'm a little bit lazy. We're just essentially starting from the middle by one, and then we expand it by three, uh, three and then so forth, right? So that's basically the idea behind this, uh, or by another one, so that now it's length three and so forth. Um, okay, so so this is how we construct a palindrome is because if, well, uh, a word of length one is always a palindrome, and then a word of length three is a palindrome if they are equal to each other. And then the next one, and as soon as, soon as they're not equal to each other, then it's no longer a palindrome, right? So that's basically the idea. Um, so now we can do edges of, so let's say we're at start. So let's say we're here at the start. Then the space is actually the start. So we can... So then the, the space that we're adding is behind between these two. So that is equal to, um, actually we want to do the other way. So that's pointing backwards. So, okay. And you could do it either way, but these are just my edges. Um, yeah, hopefully this makes sense. Basically what I'm saying is that there's a, an edge pointing uh, connecting start and start plus one. You can make it bi-directional if you like. I'm keeping it directional um, so that I'm going in one direction with my DP. You'll kind of see it later on, uh, hopefully. Yeah, and then here, okay. So if S of start plus offset is equal to S to start minus offset, um, so we run the opposite of this to break. So basically, if start plus offset is greater than or equal to n, or start minus offset is less than zero, or uh, this thing, this is you know, if this is not true, then we break. Otherwise, then we can do another edges of. Um, again, in this case, let's see, right? If we move the offset by one, we have, oops, how did this happen? Okay, so let's say now we have move, move it to the left by one, and then we move it to the right by one, right? So then here, this should be, um, hmm, 
plus one, I want to say. Yeah. Uh, dot append start minus offset. Okay. So th th that's basically doing all the construction of the list. And then now l let's do the even length palindromes. Next. Um, and this is the same idea, um, but now we have to be a little bit clearer. Of, okay. Now, now we just have to look at you know these things two at a time. So let's let's be a little bit careful. I may be a little bit sloppy on this one, but here we actually start to offset immediately because, and we can do a little quick copy and paste. Um, so I have to double check this. Um, okay. So what does this offset mean? Or rather, what does this start mean now? Mm, okay, start means. Mm, okay, I mean, and you get to choose to be honest. So I'm just trying to figure out which one is easier. Um, let's say. Let's say. Okay. Let's say we have this. Is that okay? Hmm, maybe. Yeah. So now, so okay, so if offset is zero, oh yeah, I have to double check that this is not zero, so, whoops, because we already did this here. Um, okay, if, and here we can okay with a zero. If it's zero, then it's, it, can, it compares start and start plus one, so I think this is good. So then here we do the same thing. Yeah, okay, let's just type it out. Otherwise, we do this. Oh, wait, this could be well. Because now, this is this is the character, so we want to do the right of that, uh, the space to the right of that, so that's why it's edge of my, it's plus two. Sometimes I write this as plus one twice to be more clear on why, um, but yeah. And you can kind of, eh, maybe I should have ADS this with an available. You could look at this as the right, and then this is the left, and so forth. Um, okay. So then now we should be good with all the constructions of the edges. So let's kind of give it a spin to kind of see whether we did it okay. And uh, let's just do A, B, A, B, A, B, A, C, A, or something like that. I don't know. That's just a random example. You know, I sound like I know what I'm doing. But yeah, here, so after this means that after the one space, it goes to zero, two, it goes to one and zero, which is true. Three goes to all three. Uh, four, it only goes to three because only B is a thing. Five, it goes to four, which is just one space, and then two, which is three spaces. So I think we're good here. Um, I think one thing that I did notice and I was kind of bad about is that you actually don't need a default dictionary. You just need a, you, you just need a list of uh, length n plus one. But uh, do I want to do that? Yeah, no, but, but I'm just going to leave it like this because I'm lazy. We'll fit. It is something that if you're at home, you can, fit, you can actually optimize a bit. But for now, especially for me, whenever I try to do it first, I worry about correctness, and then we can make optimizations afterwards. Um, yeah. Okay, now we're going to use dynamic programming. And you can actually use... To do the same thing, but use breath first search to, to um, yeah. I think you use breath first search. I'm gonna use dynamic programming. It doesn't. It, at the end of the day, um, the reason why both of these work is because this is a DAG, or you can construct as a DAG, um, a direct, uh, yeah, directed asynchronic graph, um, and because it is a DAG. Um, the shortest path in a DAG, it can be solved using dynamic programming and also breath first search. At least in an unweighted graph, you can use that for search. Um, you can use other things, you know, or sorry, breath first search, um, but you can, you know, use Dijkstra or something if it's not, eh, you know, uh, general's, general shortest path things. Um, so yeah, so now that we have these two things, uh, now we have all the edges, and I am going slow and deliberate, but now we have edges, now it's just dynamic programming. So yeah. So let's just say best is you go to, um, let's say infinity times n. Infinity is just some big number, fine. Uh, uh, uh. 
I'll do this because people keep on telling me to. Um, even though I feel like every time I use it, I, I mess up somehow. So yeah. So okay, and then we have to set best of zero is equal to zero um, because this is basically the space before the what before the string, and then now we just go through it. Um, yeah. And then this is. Hmm, I think well, I plus one if we want to be. I guess it doesn't. Hmm. Yeah, just to be consistent um, with the spacing, because we're now dynamic programming on the spaces. So we there what the spaces go from zero to n, meaning that there's n plus one spaces. Um, but yeah, it, okay. So now we want to go through the edges. So the previous edge in edges of index. Um, yeah. So this is you go to best of the previous plus one or well min of this and that's basically it it is gonna be n square like i said so i don't know if this is eh, hopefully this is gonna be good enough but uh but yeah hmm i do have a index of oh whoops i knew that i said n plus one and then i typed it incorrectly i knew that the entire way of course i mean you don't have to believe me it's fine i'm just telling myself uh okay so, I think I'm off by one because I miss, um, because we're looking for the minimum number of cuts, not the m number of words. Um, and the number of words relate to minimum number of cuts. It's just that the number of words is just the number of cuts m minus one, right? Oh, sorry. The number of words is the number of cuts plus one so we can uh subtract one from here i think that should be good because what, what what we actually calculate is the number of words not the number of cuts um but i think the number of words is more intuitive because otherwise you have weird edge cases maybe so yeah so this looks okay uh, do we have random bigger cases i don't know let me just bang on the keyboard a little bit so this is going to be like not that good because i don't think that that much that many um that many whatevers but okay it looks good enough for me to give it a submit so let's give it a submit the only thing i worry about is tle and i know that uh how to generate the the 2000 end case but like i said at the end of the day whether this is gets accepted is determined by the number of test cases and that is something that i cannot test for so that's why i yoloed a little bit because i knew that 2000 square was going to be fast enough but it's uh, in one test case, but it's about the sum of the test cases, at least in terms of leak code. Um, okay, so what is the complexity? I think we already talked about this, but yeah, but it's going to be at worst n square. How does it n square? Well, the, the worst case is going to be if it's all the same character, at least the way that I did it. You could have some shortcuts there, sure, but why is this? Because in this case, they, um, because you can imagine, huh? Oh, wait, that's right. You can imagine that in this case, there's you could draw an edge, um, like from from every point to every other point before that, and be, because of that, you can say that on the first on the first space, there's one edge, on the second space, there's two edge, on the third space, there's three edge, dot dot dot. So you get one plus two plus three plus four plus dot 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 to n or n plus one. I don't know. Is you go to n square, you fact or all of n square. I know that it's not. N exactly n squared it's like n squared over two roughly speaking i'm hand wavy a little bit so <laughs> excuse me but but yeah so it's going to be n square number of edges and because the number of edges are n square um this is going to, the shortest path on that is n square and and yeah um and for example because for here for every index you can have, have at most n edges uh, so therefore, this is an n square loops, and this is n square time. Um, and, and as a result, because they're n square edges, and we do store each edge, it is going to be n square space as well. Um, you can actually maybe do a little bit smarter, but but that's all I have for today. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, shortest path, dynamic programming. How did you do it? Uh, let me know what you think. Stay good. Have a great weekend, everybody. You know, welcome Larry back. Stay good, stay healthy, to good mental health. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.